This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Stick around until the end of the video to find out how you can make a gorgeous website. Hello everybody, welcome to Mike's Mike. My name is... I was struck by a sudden feeling of shock and fear when I sat down to record this video because I remembered when I was at an event recently and a girl came up to me and she said, you're so much better looking in person than you are in your videos. I think you need to fix your lighting. Also, every possible noise in existence is happening outside my window right now. What's that? Could be anything. And that could be annoying. And it has been prophesied that that is something that I would find annoying. But I'm actively fighting the annoyance allegations and I'm choosing peace. We are once again congregating to discuss cinema. Back at the sun! Oh my God! In my Pitch Perfect video, I talked about how that movie felt like a 2012 period piece, and we are all in agreement of that fact. Now, Miss Pitch Perfect 2, she's from 2015, and she is 2015. Password. Fart noise. Did you not see the parentheses? This movie is basically Pitch Perfect 1, but international. Well, I mean, Pitch Perfect did $115 million box office off a $17 million budget, so of course they're going to try and replicate it as close as possible. Now, I will flag this now. There is an evil in this movie, a barely contained evil, an evil known as the original song Flashlight. Mm -mm. Of course we're opening with an a cappella Universal Studios intro. <laughs> this time, however, it's sung by John Smith and Gail Abernathy McCad Feinberger. They are commentating an a cappella competition, which is a very surprising and shocking and strange thing for them to be doing. <laughs> Likely place for them to be. At this competition, the Barton Bellas get up to sing for Obama. Things have been looking, dare I say, swell for the Barton Bellas. They won nationals, as we know, and now they're three-time defending champs. What an inspiration to girls all over the country who are too ugly to be cheerleaders. They sing a remix of Timber into the national anthem, brackets question mark brackets question mark because not my country not my circus i don't know it could be a random song for all i know then they mix in wrecking ball with rebel wilson hanging from the ceiling I came in like a wrecking ball. yeah let's get into this pink realness p exclamation nk realness pink has not stepped foot on the ground since misunderstood in 2001 <laughs> So Fat Amy's swinging around and then her leotard rips. <laughs> she put the kitty cat off reclusive. This is disastrous. She's turning. No, not the front. Nobody wants to see the front. Oh no. <laughs> These movies love to start with a disastrous display of disaster. Yes. We had Aubrey's Chunda at the start of Pitch Perfect 1 and now we have this. She showed her to the present. In case you were wondering how 2015 this movie was, one of the first songs on the soundtrack is Bang Bang. May we as a society never forget how diabolical the Bang Bang cover was. Because of this comment de ton booty blunder, the Bellas are in imminent danger. The Dean is ready for you, Tramps. Their derriere disaster has cast a pear-shaped shadow on the illustrious institution of collegiate a cappella. And as a result, the a cappella board has suspended them from competing at a collegiate level, and they also won't be going on their victory tour. Instead, they're going to be replaced by the current European champions. But all hope is not lost. They haven't been stripped of their national title, which means they're automatically invited to represent America at world champs, which happens every four years. Okay, Olympics of a cappella. And this is their ultimatum. If they win worlds, they'll be reinstated. No American team has ever won. They hate us. The whole world. <laughs> the whole world hates us. The thing about the Bellas, the girls, is that they're not gonna give up. I will do whoever it takes in order for us to get back to the top. You mean whatever it takes? Yeah, I'll do that too. Remember in Pitch Perfect 1 when they had the international collegiate a cappella competition, but it was giving very much national? Well, no more of that bullshit. This is real international. Loving how atrocious this world champ registration page is. Graphic design is their passion, but clearly website design is not. <laughs> More on that later. Now, another condition that has been imposed on the Bellas because Fat Amy was from the ceiling is that they can no longer hold auditions either. That's when Hayley Steinfeld turns up. I don't really know why, but I'm a big Hayley Steinfeld fan. It feels kind of pre-programmed in a way, like she hasn't really done anything to make me go, I'm gonna support this woman with my life. And yet I do. So what's that about? Emily arrives on campus with her mom, Leia from Futurama. Oh honey, you're gonna love this place. Her mom was a Bella, which means that she should automatically also become a Bella. Nepotism is inescapable. Thanks to me, you were born into it. And then I'm gonna be your mother and your sister. Gross. Okay, 
Miss Emily is obsessed with becoming a Bella. She has it at the top of her dream board, which for me really makes her the Rachel Berry of Pitch Perfect. Let's just let that idea sit in the back of your mind and eat away at you for the rest of the video like a flesh-eating fungus. A fung yes. Now you might be wondering, where are the Treblamikas? We have a very special performance for you guys today. The Treblamikas! They're performing Mika Lollipop at orientation. Something too hard in a lollipop My love's gonna get you down Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can't click. It sounds really fleshy. Ew. Existence is prison. Two of the main Treblamikas, of course, are Benji and Jesse. Benji is obsessed with Emily. I just want to put you in a box and saw you in half. For magic. As a part of a trick. He does magic. And Jesse's still with Becca, so I guess that means they're four years strong. Congratulations to them. Becca's focus is not totally on the Bella's reputation implosion right now. Big reputation. Ooh, yeah, baby, I say, wow. And I hold my She's just landed an internship with Residual Heat Recording Studio, which is huge for her career, but she's feeling guilty that she's turning her back on the Bellas a bit. Like, Chloe's deliberately failed classes three years in a row to stay in the Bellas, and she's having a meltdown that if they lose worlds, she's wasted her time. So Becca doesn't want to tell her that she's doing this internship, which would pull her focus off the Bellas. There's a montage of her first day on the job, and the song in the background is Change Your Life by Iggy Azalea. I'ma change your life, I'ma change you, I'ma change your life. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, yes. Anytime this movie reminds me of 2014, 2015, I feel like that one Barbie reaction video. The 2015 icity of Bella's corporate casual blazer with Tumblr 1975 boot would scare some. Becca's boss at the recording studio has been hired by Snoop Dogg to record a Christmas album. Keep up, everyone. He was so moved by the power of music to unite the world or some shit that now he wants to drop his own cool Christmas album. This Christmas album has to be something new, something fresh, something different, something usual, not your usual typical Christmas album. <sighs> this is really hard for me to say but I have a deep-seated beef with Christmas music. Much like I was born a Hayley Steinfeld fan for some reason, I was also born with a Christmas music intolerance. Apart from All I Want For Christmas Is You and Santa Tell Me, probably because they feel more like pop. Yes, Neon, pop, 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 you want it? I can do it. So Emily tries to audition for the Bellas, but alas, as we know, they can't take anyone new. But it turns out her mum is kind of Bella's royalty. She pioneered the syncopated booty shake. Because Emily's a legacy and technically she came to them, so they're not really breaking any rules. They're like, okay, babe, time for you to audition for your life, life, life. She sings her original song, Flashlight. Stuck in the dark with your mom, flashlight. You're getting me, getting me through the night. I hate this song. It actually makes me furious. And yet. I still stand beside Hayley Steinfeld. That's a tongue twister and a half. I still stand beside Hayley Steinfeld. Well, yes. So she gets in. Great. Happy for her. The girls go to a Treblamica's party. This isn't just any college party. This is a cappella only. So get prepared to meet a lot of sexually confused men. Benji asks Emily out, but she's like, mm, no, thank you. No, thank you. It's literally my first day. Let's not be too crazy. Becca turns up to the party post internship and tells Jesse that she hasn't told the Bellas she's in her unpaid employment era. Bumper's also there. He's graduated, but he's campus security now. For someone who left school years ago, you're harder to shake than mono. This movie will do anything to keep him around, but what I, EYE, want to see is Miss Aubrey. What's she up to? Presumably mothering somewhere. Bumper tells Fat Amy that he's actually been selected for a TV singing show. The Bellas go to a car show to suss some of their competition. The German group who took their spot on the victory tour, Das Sound Machine. Now, Das Sound Machine? Oh, the gaggings. The They're doing a cappella dubstep. Okay, dub smash. <laughs> And yeah, dub smash. Girl, that's Flula. The Bellas try to intimidate the Intimidators, but Becca physically cannot insult the main Dust Sound Machine girl. You are physically flawless. Thank you. But it doesn't mean I like you. So stupid, but exactly what I want to see. Also, Flula calls Fat Amy obese Denise. Obese Denise. Inflexible Tina. 
Lazy Susan. So now the girls have work to do. Yes, they need to do some random hula hooping and Becca needs to go back to her roots and cook up a mix. She's given us nothing so far in the mix department. She needs to remember where she came from. 212 remixes. But she doesn't have time to mix for the Bellas because she has to get in the studio with Snoop. Her boss wants something new. So Becca pipes up and does a live mix. Here comes Santa Claus. Here comes Santa Claus. Right down Santa Claus Lane. Yeah, that was fierce. I felt it in my bones specifically in my bone marrow. Now, because Becca helped out, her boss is like, babes, I'll listen to your demos. Oh, the evolution of it all from the radio station in Pitch Perfect 1. The Bellas get invited to a mysterious a cappella party. I got a pocket full of pocket full of sunshine. Well, there's just an address and a password. How sexy and mysterious. Password. Fart noise. Did you not see the parentheses? <laughs> Fart noise joke, okay. This party is run by the self-professed biggest acapella fan and is called the showdown of the National Acapella Laser Ninja Dragon League. Okay, it's literally riff off 2.0. It's like they saw how well received the first Pitch Perfect movie was and said, let's basically do the same thing again, but with more money. And let's celebrate that. We've got the treble tones, the tone hangers featuring Bumper, the Bellas and DSM. The Green Bay Packers are also there for some reason. <laughs> I'd like to be the brisket in that man sandwich. So let's get into this riffing it. Dug my key into the side of his side. See, most of the time when it comes to country music, I'm like, oh, I will let you all enjoy that and respectfully watch from the sidelines, but not when it comes to the girls. Beyonce Act 2, Lana's new album, Miley Cyrus Slide Away and Younger Now, Casey Musgraves, I'm a Joanne apologist. I've definitely mentioned this before, but a couple of years ago, I went to a Halloween party dressed as the Joanne album cover, and when I walked in, someone said, also oh, you're dressed as a flop. <laughs> Top three most scary moments of my life. So when the girls go country, I listen. <laughs> One of the categories in this little riff off is I dated John Mayer and the Bellas sing Taylor Swift. We are never, ever, ever. Oh, the Eras tour of it all. By the time you watch this video, I would have attended the Eras tour. Yes, it's true. My sister is making bracelets for the show and here are a couple of my favorites. Exile with the missing E, therefore Exile. Best believe I'm still bejulfed. And this one I cooked up. Gasoline. Pretty pleak. Remember, at the end of Pitch Perfect 1, Bumper leaves to be John Mayer's assistant, so he supposedly has intel and sings Tina Turner, implying that John Mayer and Tina Turner were hooking up on the low. Now, where are my Tina Naders? The final round is DSM versus the Bellas doing 90s hip hop, and is it Christmas? Because it's giving season. Is it giving season? Or is it giving season? New girl Emily tanks it for the Bellas by singing her original song, Flashlight. Girl, stop. Would you like to make more noise, sir? Get in me, get in me through the night. You're saying it's an original. I hate you. DSM win, and they're looking real strong right now, divas. Would you like to have sex later? No! 100% no. Becca's boss listens to her demos and says, this is all mashups. If you want to be taken seriously, you need to do some original stuff. Becca says, oh shit, this is a problem, mama. Let me get on GarageBand. Personally, I've had a membership to Soundtrap for about a year now. Have I been cooking up? Yeah, I did a dubstep remix of the Pretty Little Liars outro. Will you ever hear it? Absolutely not. Fat Amy tells Becca she knows she's been sneaking off to an internship and what was that? Uh, James, Lady Gaga art pop album slash app 1111. We need to frame this and put it in the Louvre. This is literally a historical artifact spotted in the wild. This is a representation of 2014 slash 2015. Art pop album slash app slash app guys slash app. And we know all about the slash app because we've all watched my video about it. My video that was restricted for some reason but we've all seen it. You're telling me Fat Amy is a little monster? We had to celebrate. Now that the internship is out in the open, Becca tells Fat Amy that she's worried she's not talented enough to be a music producer. Amy gives Becca some of her confidence and I am so, 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 so sure that this was improvised. I think you need a bit more. That comes from there. Okay. I'm gonna get you the good stuff now. No, I don't want bad confidence. So Becca clocks in, she's on the tool, she's ready, she's going. Don't forget, she's also supposed to be cooking up a set for Worlds. Bumper sets up an elaborate date for Fat Amy and says that he wants to be her proper legit boyfriend and she says no because she doesn't want to be tied down. Diva. Diva down. 
Diva Apocalypse. The Bellas have a practice performance on their way to Worlds. They're clawing their way back from the flash inning one step at a time. I can't unsee it. It's I, haunted it's, me ever since. I, well, here's a picture of it right here. No, this should not be That's your screensaver, John. They're performing at a senior citizen's home and think that they need to beat Dust Sound Machine at their own game. So they give this inspired performance. Oh, oh they brought the props out, John. And they're the props. It's too much. I can't. You know that one scene in Frozen when Elsa has, like, sensory overload and she's like, Anna, stop. Ooh, wow. They've got too many props. There's too much happening. One of them lights their hair on fire with the fireworks. They want to be pink fun house so bad, but it's just not happening. This literally used to be a fun house, but now it's full of evil clowns. How the hell are the Bellas meant to beat Dust Sound Machine and be reinstated as champions if they can't gag the old people? Like, they decide that they need to go on a retreat to find their sound again. Emily talks to Benji, and this fedora scared me a bit, I'm not gonna lie. 2015 moustache tattoo Zoella Holdan and Phil, like, whoa. Benji asks her out, and she says yes this time. So Benji's like, Love doing that. Also, Benji's pants. Can we not talk about that? Actually, yeah, let's talk about it. Let's move past the demons of the past by confronting. It's retreat time. Now, what did we say before? We said, who gives a fuck about Bumper? Bring back Aubrey. Well, consider your prayers, Akka answered. Aubrey now runs the Lodge of Fallen Leaves. Don't forget, she only graduated three years ago. It's kind of like how in How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days, Andy Anderson works as an editor at this fancy magazine and she has a master's degree at age 23. I'm only mentioning that because February's video was supposed to be a rom-com video and then it was Valentine's Day and everyone and their mother was posting their partner on Instagram stories and an evil spirit took hold of my heart and here we are. You run this whole place? You know, I realized that I had a knack for barking orders and bending people's will, so <laughs> I made a career out of it. Suddenly this retreat has turned into a boot camp of sorts. Can I have the keys to the mini bar? Zip it. Aubrey has decreed that the Bellas will be doing everything together until they get their sound back, including sleeping in one giant tent like this. Now, one of the main things that people had to say about my Pitch Perfect 1 video was that I didn't properly address the vibes between Chloe and Becca. So let's get into that now. You know, Becca, we're very close, but I feel like this retreat is really gonna let us discover everything about each other. They should be a couple. I don't give a fuck about Jesse. Neither does this movie. What we need is Chloe and Becca. Hashtag blowy. You're Becca and Chloe. Together you're blowy. And everyone loves a good blowy. Okay, ladies, now let's get in formation and sing Natalie and Brulia Torn. Cold and I am shamed. Lying naked on the floor. What kind of white shit is this? And you know what? Yeah, nothing is right. And I am torn. Cue montage of team building. Boy, company yeah. Me. Yeah. Speaking of building, I had a dream that Ariana Grande launched her own construction company called Grande Homes. Then they sing Lady Marmalade, and they actually did that for me. That's one of my favorite songs ever. Also absolutely filled with behind the scenes drama. Like what else could you want out of a diva collaboration? <sighs> Why are they crawling through mud? Becca flips out that she doesn't have the time to be doing all this clownery and finally tells Chloe about the internship. But she's not nice about it. She's like, God forbid I do anything besides the Bellas. And Chloe's kind of like, okay girl, the Bellas have been my family for like seven years, but go off. Becca storms off. Becca the sun! Oh my God! Oh! Oh, no. We need a ladder! No, we don't believe in ladders. What? They suggest a corporate hierarchy what? that is counterproductive to my team building what? program. To me, that kind of humor is like a cultural timestamp. It's so 2010, to 2016, I wouldn't say 2017, maybe 2011 to 2016. Because Becca is on death's door in this trap, she's suddenly feeling very open book. This entire scene is so, so, so random. Don't worry, Becca, we got it. She's alive. I sleep upside down like a bat. But all of this prompts a fireside bonding session. Becca tells everyone how she's scared she has nothing original to say, and Chloe tells everyone that she's scared to graduate. Like my dad always said, in the minefield of life, you must be prepared to lose both feet. And I think you all know what I mean. I don't. Graduations are now and the girls are emotional. What a perfect opportunity, dare I say, a pitch perfect opportunity to sing the cup song without cups. You're gonna miss me when I'm gone. Flip those mugs over divas, let's get to work. I know I gagged you all a little bit in my last pitch perfect video when I did some beatboxing. <laughs> Yeah. So the girls have got their sound back. And Fat Amy realizes... I'm in love with Bumper. What is happening? Many times I've tried to tell you... What 
is happening. What is Carry the One happening? Vibe-wise, it's 2015. It feels Super Bowl viral internet challenge adjacent. A Jason T adjacent. Post squad bonding session, Becca is so unbelievably tapped into the source. That's S O U R C E and S A U C E. She uses her boss's studio to produce a legit version of Flashlight with Emily, and she shows her boss, and he loves it. This is a solid demo with uh, with real potential. What is going on in the world in general? What is going on? How does anyone like this Flashlight song enough? I hate that song. I hope it doesn't come up again in the plot. Graduation time, and then it's time to go to Copenhagen for Worlds. It's all looking up, babes. World champs, here we come. <gasps> Stop. This was Worlds 2015. This was the vibe at the time, okay? You need to understand. I mean, I'm half expecting Azalea Banks and Florence without her machine to be frolicking in the field. Now, can the Bellas become the first American team to win the World Championship? Theoretically, yes, Gail. Realistically, absolutely not. Those girls are dead to me. Benji turns up to surprise Emily. Emily in Copenhagen. Side note, she's not giving Emily... She's just not, she's not giving Claire, she's not giving Sarah, she's giving Lucy. She's giving Bianca, she's borderline giving Hannah. But she's no Emily. This Benji Emily storyline is cute. Good for them, happy for them. It just brings up the fact that Jesse's making literally zero impact this movie. He's been in literally three scenes. There's a bunch of international acts singing, including Pentatonix representing Canada. <laughs> Pretty sure that they're not from Canada. <laughs> they're from Texas. This ain't Texas. Ain't no Hold'em. I mean, between them and Flula, this is a YouTube takeover, which actually brings me to another 2015 comparison. This movie feels peak YouTube rewind coded. I'm not gonna say any more because you get it, you know what I'm talking about. Does Sound Machine get up to perform and they absolutely eat? It's just serve after serve. They're basically a 24 seven restaurant. Oh, what time are you guys serving? Non-stop. And then there's this little fucking sleigh of a pose at the end. The Bellas are absolutely fighting for their lives right now. This is their last performance because they've graduated and potentially the last performance of the Bellas as an institution ever if they don't win worlds. Jesse got wind of the bad boyfriend allegations and surprise, he's in the crowd. The Bellas sing Who Run The World Brackets Girls mixed with Where Them Girls At. <laughs> Obsessed with this crowd of max 500 people, even I have been on stage in front of more people than that. Do you guys remember when I was on stage introducing Rina Sawayama? That was kind of pop culture history. Then the Bellas do 0.1 seconds of a Lady Marmalade remix. And they throw in a Timber remix. And I'm hype as shit, right? My heart rate is up. I'm basically burning calories watching this movie. And then they sing that fucking flashlight song. I'm stuck in the dark cause you're my flashlight. You're getting me, getting me through the night. No, I'm not gagging. I've actually never gagged less. Then suddenly the old Barden Bellas are on stage singing with them, which is all great and lovely, but not to that fucking song. What song? They're all back there, like play some Tina Turner. Play some Aretha. Like, I'm 80 years old on this stage singing with the Barton Bellas of the new, with the Barton Bellas of the old, with my friends, my gals from back in the day. I just know those old Bellas were pissed. I know I would be. If I was 80 years old and I was a Barton Bella of the past and I'm up there with the girls, haven't seen them in decades, and there's some young Barton Bellas there, and I'm like, cool, let's get into this Celine Dion. Let's sing some Aretha Franklin. What the hell is Flashlight? Also, logistically, this is an absolute nightmare. The World Championships are in Copenhagen. So you flew all these women to Copenhagen. Who's paying for that? Who's paying for these women to get on stage to sing this random original song by some girl who just joined the university? I have no qualms with Hayley Steinfeld as we know. But this Emily girl, oh, who are you? Like literally, who are you to have the Bellas singing your original song and getting the final spotlight? I understand that the movie's trying to be like, oh, she's the next generation of the Bellas, but like, no one in that audience knows who she is. They know who Becca is. They know who Chloe is. They know who Fat Amy is. I would say don't piss me off, but I'm already pissed off, so what now? And then they win. I could not believe it. Dust Sound Machine was so much better. 
just outrageous and dare I say unfair. It kind of reminds me of Glee when the Trouble Tones should have won that competition they didn't. But they should have. This is fun though. In the end credits there's a clip of Bumper on The Voice and everyone turns their chairs and he picks Christina. This movie tries to be as camp as the original but it's just not that girl. Perhaps the campest thing about this movie is the Texan a cappella group Pentatonix representing Canada with gigantic maple leaves on their outfits to show they're from Canada. <laughs> but then the Bellas representing USA have no USA branding. Pentatonix just love Canada. <laughs> also I didn't really cover this because the jokes are so shit but a lot of the comedy in this movie is just casual racism? I mean that in itself feels very early 2010s. Like there's a new character in the group Flo and basically her whole role in the movie is to add these little like quips or references or jokes about you know climbing the border or da 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 and it's like Okay. I would like to finish my discussion by showing this review from Rotten Tomatoes. This is a rare comedy sequel that works, so let's hope they don't do a third. I think the best thing about this movie is how ridiculous it is. They knew they couldn't one-up the mashups from the first movie, so they leaned into the ridiculousness. But you know what's ridiculous in a bad way? That atrocious World Championships of Acapella website. And see, the thing is, I can help them because it just so happens that this video is sponsored by Squarespace. Squarespace gives people a stylish and powerful online platform from which you can build your own website. Squarespace has lots of professional and dare I say glamorous website templates that are unique and customizable, which means you can do a lot of things. You can make changes to the look of the site, update content and add features to make your site stand out. If you're setting up an online store, well, May the sales be ever in your favor. And Squarespace has you covered for different product types, whether that's physical, digital, or service products. You could even implement features like gift cards or real-time shipping rates. If you're looking to interact with your audience more directly, you could leverage Squarespace email campaigns. You could send welcome emails, keep your audience updated on your business, send discount codes, and then see what people are responding to using the built-in analytics. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash Mike's Mike, that's M-I-K-E-S-M-I-C, to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. I got a lot of when 